On September 6, 2009, the Bulgarian lottery randomly selected a sequence of six numbers in their lottery draw. This was a 649 lottery, so you pick six numbers, and each number can range between 1 and 49. Here were the winning numbers. There's nothing terribly surprising about this set of numbers. These are ranked from low to high, by the way, because the order doesn't matter. If you picked these six numbers in any order, you win. What was surprising was that four days later, on September 10th, the Bulgarian lottery did another draw and randomly selected a new set of six winning numbers. Here is the set of new numbers drawn four days after the first. It was the same set. They drew exactly the same numbers. Not in the same order, but the same numbers. Now, of course, this caused quite a stir. There were questions about fraud, whether a mistake had been made, and so on. This is exactly the sort of case where our intuitions tell us that this is a massively unlikely coincidence. And so we look to alternative stories to explain how it could happen. But it's also a good case study to illustrate more of the principles that we've been talking about. It turns out that the chances of observing this sort of coincidence are much higher than people think. Let's start with a simpler problem that has a similar structure to the lottery problem. This is a famous problem in probability theory. It shows up in just about every probability textbook. It's called the birthday problem, or sometimes the birthday paradox. You're at a party, and the guests are showing up, and you wonder to yourself, what are the odds that two people at this party share the same birthday? Not the year, just the date, like January 14th or November 22nd. The one thing that people know about this problem is that there are 365 days in a year, so the chance that any particular person has a particular birthday chosen at random is 1 in 365. But they're not sure how to work out the rest of the problem. So let's rephrase the question. How many people would you have to have at the party before there was a 50-50 chance that at least two people shared the same birthday? Now if you ask this question to people, almost everyone thinks the number is pretty high. A common answer, if you survey them, is 183. Why 183? Well, that's about half of 365, so the reasoning is that if you had 365 people, you would almost certainly have a match, so to get a 50% chance of having a match, just cut the number in half. Now, it turns out that this estimate is way too high. The answer surprises everyone when they first see it. You only need 23 people to have a 50% chance that two of them will share the same birthday. The key to understanding why the number is so low is to realize that we're not asking about the odds of someone at the party matching a specific birthday, like April 1st. We're asking whether any two people share some birthday. That means we need to look at all the pairwise combinations and look for a match among any of these pairs. The number of combinations increases quickly when you add new people. When you have only four people, for example, there are six possible combinations. But if you double the number of people, the number of combinations doesn't just double, it goes up much faster. With eight people, you have 28 possible combinations. With 16 people, you have 120 possible combinations. So you can see how the probability of finding a matching pair increases quickly when you add new people. When you hit 23 people, you have 253 possible combinations. And this turns out to be enough to give you a 50% chance of having a matching pair somewhere in the set. You can use probability theory to derive a general function that relates the number of people to the probability of finding a matching pair. And this is what that function looks like. It has a sinusoidal structure that rises quickly and levels off. You hit 50% at the inflection point, which is 23 people. Another surprising feature when you look at it is how quickly you hit 95%. With 50 people at the party, it's almost certain that at least two people will share a birthday. You can probably win some money at a party with 50 people if you bet someone that at least two people in the room have the same birthday. Because most people who haven't heard about the birthday problem will think the odds are low. Now, what about the lottery example that we started with? These were the winning numbers in the Bulgarian lottery. The chance that this particular set of numbers would show up at random is this. One in almost 14 million. Four days after drawing this set of numbers, the Bulgarian lottery drew the same set. Surely this is an astronomically unlikely event, right? Well, yes, it's unlikely. But remember, there's a difference between saying an event is unlikely and saying that it's rare or that we should never observe it. Structurally, this question is similar to the birthday problem. With the birthday problem, we're looking at the chances of finding a matched pair of birthdays. 
With the lottery, we're looking for a matched pair of lottery numbers. A key variable in the birthday problem is the number of people at the party. The corresponding variable in the lottery problem is the number of lottery draws. The most important feature of the birthday problem is that we're not looking for a specific match. We're looking for any match. It's the same for the lottery problem. We're looking for any matched pair of lottery draws. It's this feature that generates the explosion of combinatorial possibilities. We need to look at how many times lottery draws happen, and with each new draw we get to compare that number with every number that has been drawn previously. This exploits what David Hand calls the law of very large numbers. It dramatically increases the chances of observing a matching pair of lottery numbers. Given the number of lottery draws, how many possible pairs are there? For only three draws, there are only three possible pairs. For 50 draws, the number of pairs jumps to over 1,200. If we run the lottery a thousand times, the number of possible pairs of winning numbers is almost half a million. So, the odds of any given ticket matching may be 1 in 16 million, but when you've got half a million shots at it, the odds of actually getting a match are looking better and better. Now, as with the birthday problem, we can ask, how many lottery draws do we need to have a 50% chance of finding a matching pair? And as with the birthday problem, the number is lower than you would expect. It takes around 4,400 draws to hit the 50% mark. And like with the birthday problem, the percentage is going to rise quickly with each additional lottery draw. Now, 4,400 lottery draws might seem like a lot, but if you assume that a lottery draws, say, twice a week, then it will take just under 43 years to hit this number. So after 43 years, it's more likely than not that some of the sets of six numbers drawn by a lottery machine will have matched exactly. Now, if you've been following along, you'll notice that we've ignored an important feature of the Bulgarian lottery case, which is that the duplicate sets of numbers occurred on consecutive draws. This is a much more surprising event than just getting any two matching pairs over the history of the lottery. And that's all true. But we haven't even scratched the surface of the number of possibilities that we're allowed to consider. Remember, we're not just looking at the history of a particular lottery. No one specified the Bulgarian lottery in advance. What we're trying to estimate is the chance of finding a matching pair of numbers in any lottery. So we need to take into account all the lotteries of that type going on around the world and compare every draw with every other draw across this whole field of lotteries. And we need to make these comparisons over an extended period of time. Every new draw is compared with every other draw going on right now and every other draw that has occurred in the past. Now when you do this, you get a combinatorial explosion that far exceeds the numbers we've been looking at with just the single lottery. Given these possibilities, it would be shocking if a pair of consecutive winning numbers did not show up at some point. And so we shouldn't be surprised to learn that it's happened before. For example, the North Carolina Cash 5 lottery produced the same winning numbers on July 9th and July 11th of 2007. So what's the moral of the story? The fact is that we systematically underestimate the probability of what we think are unlikely or impossible coincidences. In reality, seemingly impossible coincidences happen all the time, every day. They are an inevitable consequence of the laws of probability when you're dealing with large numbers of people or events that can interact in a large number of ways. The problem is that we're not naturally good at thinking combinatorially and we don't pay attention to the factors that actually determine the probability of observing an event. So in short, we're not very good at predicting what the world would look like if the laws of probability hold, which they do. There's a fundamental mismatch between our internal models of the world and the logic of events that actually governs the world. That's why we need to be very careful about trusting our intuitions about what is likely or unlikely to occur. We need help to make good judgments and we need to recognize and acknowledge that we need help.